Hi, Carol here. A warm welcome once again to my craft room. It has been a while, hasn't it? I'm going to leave all the links for this album that I'm creating from my creative spirit. And I just went on to get the inspiration for this 6x6 album that Claire created. And I'm going to just show a little bit of it because, believe it or not, I had 50 55 hours of work time to edit down and this was the it took me three days just to edit I mean it was crazy uh, but I thank you if you're here joining me and I hope that you will go over to Claire's channel and I'm going to direct direct link you over to this particular album because I followed it step by step now I'm doing this a bit different I'm going to show you the finished product first then we'll move forward I created the closing here with some cotton ribbon that I had in my stash some jewelry that I put together my bro my cameo brooch here became the back focal point uh, for the album and the closure I think was a Tim Holtz closure that I had gotten some time ago and I went in my stash to get some of the uh, products, but uh, Scrap Muir is the collection that I'm using and it's absolutely insanely beautiful. And I'll get to that in a minute. But what I wanted to concentrate on was using the Fuse Tool. I have had, had that Fuse Tool sitting in a uh, clear view of me actually <laughs> for some time and haven't used it. And I thought, no, I'm going to dedicate my Fuse Tool to this project here. Now this is a bookmark that I created with the Fuse Tool. I created many, many things you're going to see using acetate. Um, so I'm going to show you which acetate I used. This is a little book I actually gave. The back of it has a spine. You'll see the little spine. And then I slid in some stamped images, and it looks like a little book. See that? And then you can put all of your pictures inside here. And you know, I was thinking with this album, you know that little uh, Insta camera, the small one? I have that. It fits those per those pictures perfectly. And the that little item there is a Kodak um uh, I showed that in that where you get it. It's right here. See these little Kodak card uh, for keeping uh, business cards in? So it's sticky on one side and not on the other. Really thick too. Uh, I just love these and I had them in my stash so I thought I would use them. Everything that the acetate holds to other than the pull tabs that I made, this is magnetized on the back. This is magnetized on the little envelope I made and we're going to together make this and uh, we just fussy cut used a lot of crystal lacquer or you know whatever you have that makes things shiny a little belly band to hold some pictures in and I made so many of these little tags to put inside them using the scrap mirror collection and uh, I use stays on, obviously, white stays on ink and black stays on. Again, this is magnetized right here, as you can see. And it's a little booklet to put your pictures. I did one to the side. And I actually created paper to match the paper line because I didn't want to use it all up because I am going to make a box to put this in. So I needed to have some uh, leftovers. And this is a fused tool booklet to put pictures and memorabilia. It has the little spine there, your, you know, little quarter inch gusset, if you want to call it that. And we're going to do some alcohol inking on the acetate. You know that I, for my acetate, I use book um, pages. So um, it holds well, all magnetized behind everything. And I have a beautiful saying here especially in times like this that we're going through. 
uh, to remember that God does understand everything and we're not to put any fear, uh, we're not to fear, you know, and uh, that's what I'm holding on to. It's uh, just letting this, uh, you know, process run its course and um, I pray for everybody all of my subscribers and family and friends I pray that uh, you're doing well and coping with this so here you go I did a little band you know in you've all seen that gold thread that I use and once again using the fuse tool and I did a little spine down the side of this booklet so that you could put pictures inside here and yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know me. Okay, let's get it back in there. I don't find it hard taking stuff out, but I sure do find it hard putting everything in. Then I had this little material I stamped. It says, let faith be bigger than your fears. And everything I did in this album, took me a couple of weeks to create this album because I don't do particularly all album creations. Although I am so blessed to be designing for Claire at My Creative Spirit and I just am overwhelmed, you know, that I have this opportunity. So I wanted to put this album and dedicate it to My Creative Spirit for Claire. And this is her 6x6 album that I actually copied uh, step by step. Isn't that a beautiful image on there? And you're going to see a lot of beautiful stamps and all with stays on. That's a, a burgundy stays on ink I had to match. This is a stamp that all of these little butterflies kind of came out of the paper. I just loved it. And I found this in my stash, this image. And I worked with cameos because this is like a French collection and it's such a romantic feel to this paper. This is a real key that I put outside the stamped image of the key. It fit perfectly. I love going into my stash and now it's the time that we are really uh, forced to work with what we have in our craft room. And you know me, I love shopping in my own craft room. So, <laughs> yeah. And so I'm going to take you step by step through this album. Everything that I made, how I created it. And I want to thank you if you're going to sit and follow along. And uh, so get your snack ready and your coffee or tea. And thank you for joining me. And thank you, Claire, for the inspiration. I wanted to show Debbie, look at, I found your beautiful dangle for my glue. And I just wanted to let you know. Now, I'm using a really hard black board that I had bought some time ago. And it's six by six, obviously, the spine two and a half by six, and just slide it over it. But this is the Cricut roll that I'm using. It's a vinyl, and uh, it's really nice to work with. It just has a little curve to it as far as sticking, um, that you get all of the creases out when you do this. This is the only difference in the album that Claire made uh, as far as using um, her, you know, adaptation to making a 6x6 uh, album. I tried to stick as close as I could because I don't have any of the supplies yet that Claire is going to send me for the design team projects, but I did want to get a head start, Claire. <laughs> yeah. I wanted to make sure that I somewhat knew what I was doing when I'm making an album. And I love the fact that Claire wants me to put my spin on creating for her. She does not want uh, the beautiful uh, creations that she creates and uh, to be identical. That, that would be crazy, you know. Uh, here is my little Zyron. This is the three inch. I just love it. I'm running my Tyvek. I do put Tyvek in my albums when I make them for anything that bends, just so that, you know, especially working with this Cricut vinyl, you know, it, uh, I wasn't sure how stable it was going to be, but really it is. It's beautiful to work with, and it's, uh, I got it at Michael's, and it's, uh, 
you know, where the cricket, all the cricket rolls are. And it's um, that pat, looks like patent leather, doesn't it? I just love it. So here I'm just going to put it right over the two creases and then as far as the rest of it goes, I followed Claire, Claire's album and instructions that I'm going to leave the link. I followed it verbatim. So that would be great, won't it? That you can just uh, go to the link. It will be directly over to Claire's project. It's beautiful. It's a Christmas album, and I just loved it. I'm going to miter the sides here, leaving just a little bit. And that is really all that I left in because it would have been five hours if I kept the whole process of how I created the pages and what I did. So I had to, uh, you know, sacrifice certain things. With 55 hours of work time, it was uh, a challenge to get it just under three hours for you. So I hope that you're able to follow it and it's uh, understand, you know, you can understand the process and that you will go over and check out. I mean, everybody knows my creative spirit. I mean, I've been following Claire for a few years and she is one of the top album creators and creators of working with paper that I have seen. So um, I feel really confident when I go over there and just step by step and what an instructor Claire is so easy to follow her voice is calming she knows what she's doing that's what I'm trying to tell you and she makes it easy easy peasy to follow along so that's what I liked the time of 55 hours work time was me figuring out my own stuff <laughs> yeah <laughs> had nothing to do with you Claire it had everything to do with me just, uh, you know, finding the stuff in your stash and knowing what to create with certain designs on the paper. It was so much fun. I couldn't wait to share it with you. I've been uh, MIA for a couple of weeks and I just wanted you to know I create created every day, every day. And I uh, wanted to get this up and share it with you and share that I'll be designing for my creative spirit. How wonderful is that? I'm truly blessed. Thank you so much to Claire. So here we go. I'm going to put, I like this orange tape. I love it for stickiness. So I put this on top because this is where you're going to put your spine. You have to see how Claire makes her uh, pages and the spine to slide the pages down onto. It's incredible. It's a five page album and I encourage you to go over and check out the process of making this or any sized album. Claire has all of it over on My Creative Spirit. So here it is. Isn't this gorgeous paper? This is 8x8. Eight eight. And, uh, you know, obviously you have the 12x12 12 12 sheets that are identical to this. And I only have two sheets of paper left. Two sheets of the large paper the 12 by 12 sheets, I used up everything. I used it for tags, I used it for backing for pictures. I really did want to incorporate just about everything. Look at all of those goodies in there and these little um, uh, doodads, I'll call them. And These are the swing tabs. I used those for making a lot of swing tabs and all kinds of goodness. I tried to push my creativity to the max while making this. I wanted it to be fun for you, easy to follow. Uh, get out that Fuse tool and uh, you know, if you're like me, I had it, every time I cleaned, I put it in a different spot. <laughs> so I had to do a little looky-looky, but I found it. And I couldn't wait to show you some ideas, some different ideas for creating. Even in your cards, you know, you can incorporate that. And as you know, I get these folders that I keep all of my um, papers in, like my collections. They, they're they like sandwich bags, but really thick. And then it has the slider, and then I put the name across there that I cut off the 12 by 12 paper so I know 
when I file it. And now Blue Fern, I'm going to get out a couple of their um, cardboard images. We're going to get out some distress inks, some oxide inks, some, uh, oh, just there's so much that I wanted to share with you that uh, as we sit together in our houses, you know, and you're in my craft room now joining me, if you clicked on to this, thank you so much. And uh, let's make it a fun time together. So I'm just going through a few that I had uh, in my stash that were kind of, uh, had that French theme to it. And I love this park bench. You know the opener there where it goes down to the Eiffel Tower? I just pictured some benches on the side. Now this is leather look paper. I thought of doing that brown because it does kind of tie in with that light, lighter brown tone in the paper. But then I thought, no, I had the same thing in this like crocodile look in a um, uh, uh, cream white. It went, oh. It was just made for this album, I'm telling you, for the spine. It, it's gorgeous. So I just went down into my goodies and there it is. Woohoo! Isn't that something? I don't know if it's shells or if it is that crocodile look. I don't have the album in front of me. You know, I should go get it, shouldn't I? I will do that right now. I'm back. It's like little peacock feathers. Uh, just delicate, dainty, and oh so romantic looking. I really liked it. And I'm going to do my best to link up everything over on my blog for you. And I just have to encourage you to see how Claire puts her pages together. It's incredible. It gives you an extra quarter inch to work with so that all the pages lie perfectly flat. That's the only way I can explain it. They, she creates it in such a way that all your pages lie flat and it's easy peasy. And she has this black tape. Um, you, you have to have it. I, I don't have it now. Um, oh, I'm just going back over. It's permanent premium vinyl by Cricut that uh, I used on there in black. And now I'm putting all of this before I put the back. I'm even going to take the Cricut machine out. When I do albums, I love to run all my paper through it. I don't like using the quarter inch, you know, having to use it. I would have had to use a thousand uh, strips. <laughs> yeah, It's so much easier for me to get out my um, Xyron, you know. There's the little one inch, there's the three inch, and then you have the five inch and the granddaddy nine inch. And here I have the orange tape, then I'll go over it with my um, art glitter glue. And then this is the Cricut. I ran that through the Cricut. Say it again, Carol. <laughs> yeah, I'm going so fast. I'm, I, I'm losing my train of thought here. Yes, so I'm just working it in. Work that baby in and uh, Oh, I love it. I love it. And you know, the shiny vinyl, it, it, at first I was questioning it, you know, but I like it and you don't get to see much of it at all, you know, just teeny bit of the edges, but uh, I thought it kind of slide all over. I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to do there, but I did love this paper. I love the lilac color. Just everything for me fit in. And my jewelry, I was able to go in my stash, my jewelry making stash, and get some things used up. And yeah, look at that. Isn't that gorgeous with the pot of those? Uh, they're not lilacs. I don't know. They're kind of like field lilacs. They're just, just gorgeous. So I didn't have two of the same size. Otherwise, I would have put some of the uh, glossy accents on it and raised it up. But it worked out well the way I put it together. I think I was really happy with the finished product. And I want you to see how that black tape, I use the Cricut roll to put the edges on. When you fold down your pages, see how each one has a little strip of 
looks like tape, black tape. Uh, for me, it's the Cricut tape. That way you don't, you don't spare on the length of your paper that's going into each page. I thought that was incredible, Claire. That's brilliant. And you put that around the outside so you're able to get the whole function of, you know, the whatever size, if it's five by six or, you know, you don't lose that by putting tape on the inside. You know, you end up, if you use a quarter inch tape, folding this back on the corners, you that's a half an inch you're going to lose. And this way you don't lose any space. And I'll show you that as we go along. So I, I found these little uh, hinges. I wanted to use that because I thought, oh, an album with hinges on it. How cool is that? I got out my Artist Loft acrylic gesso in white. I love the consistency of this gesso uh, to work with. So because I'm going to use uh, crackle paste, and the crackle paste is the Viva crackle paste, and I'm not kidding. In this paper that you're looking at there, it has crackle, like cracks through all of it. You know where the, the, the flowers and that beautiful vase thingy dingy up there you're seeing? Well, there's crack, cracks, crackles all through that paper, that crackle look. And um, this Viva crackle paste, every time you put a layer on, the thicker that you layer up, either with acrylic paint or with the actual uh, crackle paste, it crackles up on you. And I want, I think at the end I get a real good close up. Here it is here, it's Viva Crackle Paint. And I'm going to use, I think it's either the Wilted Violet or um, this one could be the, uh, oh, I can't even see it, uh, Seedless Preserves. And I'm mixing it up. Oh, there it is. Wilted Violet Distress Ink. And then I mix some of the darker with the Seedless Preserves. Either or matches this paper wonderfully. So we're mixing it up with the Crackle Paste, like I said. And then at the end, I end up putting some white acrylic paint in the mixture so that I get a little bit of, uh, a little bit more thickness. Because as you know with Crackle Paints, how it works is, the more layers you have on, the more crackle you get when you heat set it. And it took me a while to figure that out uh, when I first started this uh, craft endeavor six years ago. You know, you have to figure all these things out by trial and error. And um, a lot of trial and a lot of error. And then you get it down, uh, the concept of it, uh, as time goes by, get, becomes a little easier, you know. So here we go. I'm just going to heat set it, wait for these little crackles to come up, and uh, I'm going to show you there how beautiful it looks. It just looks looks aged and aged, and then you have that, oh, this is, I think, where, did I come in? I think I did direct crackle paint right there, and I'm just, uh, oh yeah, getting it down. And you want to get the sides and kind of inside the little... Uh, round circles there that are probably meant for little bolts, right? Um, I didn't get that crazy. I didn't find any screws or bolts to put in there. I wish I had some that small, but I didn't. I guess some teensy weensy brads would have been cute, eh? Hmm, I never thought of that. But I, I'm getting something to get the gesso and the crackle paste out of the holes there just because it's easier to do it when wet than it is to do when it's all dried. And look at that crackle come up. Oh yes, work it. That's what you have to do. Heat it and apply. And it's gorgeous. That's all I can say. There it is. And look at the match on that. Is that not sweet? I just love it. And then you're going to just put some... Um, of the distress ink around the edges of this paper. Can you see, if you look really close, if you stop your computer and look, you'll see all of the crackle be in this paper. It's wonderful. And uh, I'm just adding some white glue inside because you could see some of the cardboard. Now here's the bench, the beautiful bench. I love it. So I took some of the crackle white just to see how it absorbed 
before I put my gesso on and uh, it worked well but I did know I had to have the gesso it was not going to seed itself without having gesso first so here we are getting another piece of paper and we're going to dry it have something there to get you know all of the mixture that you've used whether it's paint or whether it's crackle to get it out of the holes uh, while it's still wet now we're going to apply it with some of the distress ink I found those two inks the seedless preserves and the wilted violet two of the nicest colors to match this uh, collection and the old fingers you can't go wrong with the fingers they really do apply things nicely and then you don't have to wash up a lot of brushes, right? And I'm going to do, of course, a shaker behind here. So I just put on my eighth of an inch, I think it is, double-sided sequin tape. And then I'm going to add my page protectors, the acetate. I love the thicker page protectors I get at my stationery store. I mention it all the time. Any acetate will work well, of course. And uh, here I'm just going to apply it to the back so that I can add my um, sturdy strips. These are so thin. They're perfect. And I think that's eighth of an inch, of course, as well. And I always should just say sixteenth of an inch, but I think it's an eighth of an inch. See the crackles in the paper? That's all I'm going to keep saying. And I didn't want it to be straight on. I wanted it to have a slant to it. And of course, I always put the good liquid glue on top of the double-sided tape. Here I have my little seed beads, and this is going to stick beautifully. It really does stick beautifully. And if you want to make it darker or lighter, it's up to you. And in my stash, I had some violet pearls, some light violet pearls that I go around the edges just so you don't see the, uh, you know, the double-sided tape strip on there. So that I got at the dollar store where nothing's a dollar. Remember I told you I got those, uh, a whole lot of rolls for a really good price. So the hot glue is coming out here. Yeah, watch your old fingers there, Carol. And we're going to <coughs> seat these. And I think it's a perfect match for the front of this album. I was, you know, thrilled to have these in my stash. Ouch, ouch, yes. You can almost feel it, can't you? I'm just getting the glue out there. So pretty. And I really do like the slant on the shaker uh, for some reason. You don't want everything, you know, unless you like that look, of course, where everything is, you know, precise, going all in one direction. But I think it's nice to just... Uh, be a little different and there's my shaker. Isn't that gorgeous? And I did two layers of the Dury's tape, not just one. I did it too high so that if you're going to do something like that and then we're going to move along. It's hard to believe that 55 hours were in this particular project, isn't it? Uh, but it really was 55 hours in so many minutes. I can't even remember. So here, of course, you have to put a waterfall. Yeah, that's going to be on the inside page of the waterfall. And I've got this down. Keep my scissors away from my paper. That is my new theme. Keep the scissors away from the paper. You know I have this thing for if it doesn't look good to my eye, I start cutting with the scissors until I have no paper left. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just getting it right the first time. Just cut it all. Make sure the sizing is all the same. Make sure you score it uh, the same. I'll share with you um, what the size of this uh, these pages are. Just a second here. So these are three by three, and I did one, two, three, four, five, six of them. And put the belly band on so it's really easy to even put the paper to match, you know, it's nice. And uh, it's always nice to have a waterfall, isn't it? You could put a couple in this, this album and it wouldn't be overdone. It's just a real sweet way to put pictures on there. And I really like my um, Polaroid 
you know, that has those two by three pictures, I think it is. That would fit nicely on here. And what makes it nice is if you're using your fuse tool to create little pockets, you can create them to whatever size. You have six by six space for photos, you know, five by seven photos. And I really love the idea of having pockets made out of acetate because not only does it store it from the dust, but it keeps them longer. So I, I think you're really going to like doing this, creating pockets and creating the book style pockets with the fuse tool, all of it. Here I'm just uh, going to make the band, the not the belly band, but the, uh, you know, to hold the waterfalls down, the actual band, I guess it is. And then I'm going to cover it front and back. And I'll tell you what, after doing... You know I struggled with uh, magnets on getting down how to put the magnets on and glue dots they're my best friend and you know that glue dot thing thingy thing I got at the dollar store where nothing's a dollar I there's got to be 5,000 glue dots on that you just press it down and boing up comes a glue dot uh, let me just see what that name of that thing is for you. Here we go. It's made by Elmer's. Can you believe it? Elmer's. And it was at the dollar store, like I said, my dollar store where nothing's a dollar. Probably paid a buck and a quarter. And you just tap down. You're supposed to just tap it onto your paper and then the glue dot comes off. But I like the idea of taking the glue dot off with a pokey tool and then laying it down where you need it. I find even though it's see-through, it's hard to seat it exactly right on what you're using. You'll see me use it later on. So here we go, 100 miles an hour. I am just going to uh, put the paper inside and out, put my glue dot on there. Two things I learned from doing this album, my friends. One is how to get the magnets to work for you. Oh yes. After you use quite a few of them, it comes natural. You know where to put it and where you don't have to have it, especially if you're doing, um, you know, a little booklet like I show you later. Sometimes you don't even need to have a magnet on the other side because one magnet can serve as two, and you'll see that as well. Here I'm just going over the edges. And uh, the other thing I learned to do is use eyelets, my eyelet maker. I've got that down. I don't want to, um, you know, say too much there. <laughs> Sometimes you brag on something you learned and then you never get it down again. But, you know, repetition is the key to learning. And I did use quite a few eyelets. And I remember uh, back in the day when you're watching, especially if you just get started. I remember after I retired... And I'm thinking to myself, I'm watching YouTube videos because when you're working, you don't get an opportunity to just sit and, you know, I never thought of creating on YouTube. And uh, then I found craft YouTube videos and I couldn't wait to hit Michael's or Hobby Lobby or, you know, I didn't know anything about online shopping back in the day, you know, six years ago. And so that's the only place I couldn't wait. I had my list. I had a list on my iPad like crazy and I'd go in there and I'd watch a tutorial and it said, you know, uh, they were using eyelets. So I had to go in and buy every eyelet size, every color, all these eyelets. You don't even end up using, I have so many of them uh, that I will use now because I like the swing tabs using uh, and the closures. Here I'm just putting pearls on this ticket style um, chipboard piece and uh, it says beauty and it was beauty this was a beautiful project and I look forward to many more projects as a design team member for my creative spirit uh, just you won't be disappointed and I know probably anybody watching this knows Claire 
and she designed for Graphic 45 for some time. That's when I remember Claire back then, and I was truly amazed. I just would sit and watch her design with my mouth open, and to think that I'm, you know, was chosen to design with her products is uh, a real blessing to me. And see how you have that tape wrapped around there? This is not the tape. It, Claire has a tape that you can purchase. Uh, you'll see it on the video, but I think it's a brilliant idea to not lose any space, a tuck space. You know, look at all of these uh, beautiful images. It's just gorgeous. So all you're going to do here is measure off to put it down into your tuck spot. I always just use a pencil and uh, um, yeah, slide her down there. And then I'm going to cover the top. Now, as you see the fold, you have to see the pages. You have to go over to this and see the way that Claire has designed these pages to lie flat. How she puts that little extra piece on there. It's just incredible. And I can't believe how flat my album pages seat and how much you can get in each uh, tuck space. It's crazy. It just is, you know, it's a wonderful thing. So here, I what I end up doing, I end up putting black over top. So I do a black strip over top of each of these because I put the curve on there. And using my crocodile thing, there goes the scissors. Oh my, I've got to hide them when I'm crafting. Uh, <laughs> if you've watched me create, you know, the scissors aren't a good tool for me to have around. Uh, especially if you don't, you know, you wear glasses and you're trying to cut stuff out. It doesn't cut straight. You need your trimmer. Like, what am I thinking? So these ended up being 5 and 5 sixteenths by 3 and 5 eighths to tuck down in there. Easy peasy. And you can see that little extra edge that Claire put on her, um, each one of her folds, her flips. I was amazed. I'm telling you, I can't say it enough. I just thought it was the best design I've ever seen of putting for your pages to flip inside of an album. It's wonderful. So here we go. I'm going to do all of these. And uh, I had to really speed it up. I apologize for that. There's just, there was no way around it. And then I took an eraser and erased all my measurements off there before I put the paper on, obviously. I just needed the measurements to go across there. Here's my five inch Suquane double-sided tape. And uh, then I'll put some strips on the side. That way with the uh, art glitter glue across there, I know it's gonna stick on the vinyl. So let's just take that off. And it, I'm telling you, once you get on a roll of this, um, you know, making an album, it is so much fun. Even, um, you know, you have to, th if you don't make them, like I said, I don't, you know, there's so many channels where creators just create albums and uh, they're just amazing and they have so many wonderful ideas. Uh, like I said with Claire, just beautiful, beautiful albums. And uh, yeah, so I will be designing some designs and, uh, you know, using my creative abilities to, uh, you know, showcase my creative spirit products and uh, it's going to be a blast. I can't wait to get to know the other uh, design team members and get started on that. And this is my, well, it's my start because I did have this collection uh, that Emma Scrap sent me. Remember, she sent me five, I think four, maybe four collections. And I, I have one left that I haven't uh, created with yet. So it was fun to use this particular uh, collection. So here we go. I'm going to put the front on and 
I don't think I put the pearls across the the entire cardboard piece there. Did I yet? No. I like to hide the um, the tape as much as I can with whatever I can. I just check my stash out. I had so much stash around. It was crazy. The island where I create was full. I had two wing back kind of chairs that I use for the island full. Uh, behind me on my carts were full. <laughs> it was like, wow. You know, at the end of the night, I had, had to put them away. I mean, it was just like stacking too high. It was like an accident ready to happen. So there you have it. The front is done. I love the color of those little tiny miniature peacock feathers on that faux leather uh, paper that's on the uh, back of it on your... Um, look at that. See how it lies flat? It's incredible. Just incredible. Uh, right there. I really did like the clean look of the spine on the back using that leatherette style paper. And um, it just, I didn't want to cover it up. That's why I went with the cameo, uh, bra uh, the uh, brooch that I had. And as you can see here, I did have to add some black because I didn't want to show the tape that I had used, you know, the acrylic um, Cricut uh, that I used for the actual book. And um, yeah, so I'm just measuring it there. And I thought, Carol, the best thing to do is just to make some black paper to go over top of each one of the hinges and then put the paper to decorate it over top. So that's what I did there. And uh, fun, fun, fun. So how is everybody doing? I would love to hear what you're doing with your time now that we're all, you know, housebound. I, I'm not one that really went out a lot after I retired. <laughs> So, you know, having a nice uh, place to create, I enjoyed being in the house. And um, so that's nice. I'm actually thinking of all the families that their children don't have school. So um, that's got to be different because, you know, many people are not working right now. And so they're home with their children. And I can really, uh, I homeschooled. Uh, my husband and I, all our children through uh, K-4, which is pre-kindergarten, and uh, right through to, they took an extra year, grade 13. So I know what it's like to, uh, to be at home with your children, you know. The only difference is, is that we made a school room. We actually ran it like a school. They wore a uniform. They got up, they started school at the same time, and, uh, you know, it was ran. You have to run it ship shape, you know, if you want your children to have a good education. Uh, I think you have to do things uh, in order and, uh, you know, decently and in order, the scripture says. And I enjoyed the time I got to spend with uh, our three sons. And, uh, yeah, so... But now, I don't think I could do it again. <laughs> You're younger then, right? You're able to do so much more. So I thank the Lord that I'm able to just create and have a nice area to do it in. And I'm actually enjoying my time with my husband home. <laughs> now, he, uh, having a heating business, he is able to get out and work because people need to have heat in their home. So they can't be without heat and water. So he's working some, and uh, so that's nice. I said to him today, I said, uh, you know, I've got to, he said, what are you doing up there in your craft room? And I said, I'm editing. Then he'd ask me the next day, what are you doing? I'm still editing. <laughs> Cause it was like two weeks of work. And uh, I said, to him, like he was just going to the store. And he said, uh, I said, I have got to get my voiceover done. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do three hours of talking. 
And I'm telling you, he burst out laughing. He says, oh, I think you'll figure out a way. <laughs> I've never had trouble talking, as you know. But I thought that was kind of funny. And then I said, well, do you want to come and do the voiceover with me? You do half, I'll do half. And he said, yeah, I'd like to help you out there, but I've got things to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, off he went. I had to get eggs. I'm telling you, there's two things I like to have in the house at all times, even if this wasn't going on right now. Butter. I am a fanatic for having a cup, making sure I have at least two pounds of butter in the house and eggs. I mean, you can't bake without eggs and breakfast. What do we have today? Oh, this is a... A dye that I got out to uh, a tuck space I'm using it for and uh, it's kind of nice I do one with this I die cut one with the paper image you know onto the paper as you can see there and then I do one black and I found the black just to be too overwhelming that's why I put the paper over top and isn't that a sweet dye and that's by Spellbinders of course and here we go putting this over top, just ghosting the black. I think it looks really nice seeing the little edges of the, the outside of the book uh, and then seeing the black ghosting on a few pages that I had here. So that's kind of nice. And this is that uh, butterfly punch that I have. It's One butterfly stays flat and the other one, the wings come up. I love this. I'll try to find it for you. I think it's an Echo uh, Punch, Echo Parker. I'll have to look it up. I can't think of it right now. I can't even think of what I was saying. I was talking about there. Oh, I'm putting pearls on the outside of this. So just that matching dark uh, gray. It's so pretty. Here it is. No, it's not. It's Martha Stewart. What was I thinking? And I love that the wings come up. You can see that it punches out the butterfly so you can put colored paper behind it. But then the next butterfly, it only, it die cut, well, it punches out the wings so that they come out and look like they're flying. It's a real pretty, pretty uh, punch. So I will show you what I use that for. And there was so many um, ideas that I wish I could have put 55 hour tutorial up. <laughs> yeah, wouldn't you love that? Yes, and uh, I'm not a fan to do parts like to put part one, part two. Uh, I always think with uh, YouTube, even if it's a three hour video, you can watch it in segments and then come back. Uh, you don't have to watch the whole thing at one time. So, anyway, I found this paper that. It was a little, you know, this is a real deep violet, but you're only going to see the butterflies on it. So I I went for putting that on there. And then at Michael's, I got some of this wedding paper. It has that sheen to it, that real nice, uh, it's almost like uh, opal. And uh, I got packages of that. So that's what I used backing all of my paper so that you could see that opal color. And then I got out some of my, um, yeah, make sure you don't put the glue. I put the glue where the butterflies were, but it worked out okay for me because I ended up putting um, glitter. I put some um, glitter I've had forever in my stash. I keep it in a salt and pepper shaker, you know, the old fashioned salt and pepper shakers back in the day. I got it at the thrift store. So I just, the glue was already on there because I had made an error and so I just sprinkled some glue on it. And it wasn't, you know, it wasn't really, I don't know, it wasn't a color I wanted to use. It was really vibrant, but I thought, you know what, I can tone it down. I'm cutting off a little bit so it's not a ton uh, that you're visually looking at. And then, like I said, I just uh, put the glitter on it to tone it down, and that's what I used. So anyway, let's get back to this. I just want to hear what's keeping you busy these days. I'd love to hear that in the comments. I miss reading your comments. I have missed being on YouTube, but I had to wait until I could finish this project, of course, and 
Now, there it is. See the little old-fashioned uh, salt and pepper shakers there? They used to always have them in the uh, 50s kind of, re the restaurants, you know, you go in for a burger and fries, and these were on the table. That's what it reminds me of. So back to my eggs and my butter. So I, I love my butter. I have to have my butter. I start to panic if I don't have butter in the house. And then eggs, I didn't have any for the last two days, so we had uh, pancakes. Uh, I got this gargantuous bag of pancake mix where you don't have to use anything but water. I got it at Costco. And they're so good. They're puffy and they're tasty and, you know, you, you put some nice maple, real maple syrup on them and they're delicious. So we had that yesterday and today because I had no eggs. And then the day before that with my last of my few eggs, I made French toast. Yes. So coming up with all these meals with my hubby home, um, you know, when he was out working, he'd always just stop and get something to eat and then he'd bring home dinner and, um, yeah, so really now it's just like, what's for breakfast? Hey, you going to have some lunch? <laughs> and then we just order out. and He goes and picks up something every night for dinner if I don't have something, you know, ready to go. I made, I love, I'm a fan of homemade French fries. Everybody knows that in my family. I love to cut up potatoes and cut them and, Put them in. The key to a good French fry is uh, putting them in the fridge in ice cold water for about a half an hour before you put them in the hot oil. So, and then drain them and then put your French fries in the oil. And I, I like vegetable oil. You know, I used to use peanut oil, but it got so expensive. So now I just use the, uh, you know, the inexpensive veggie oil. And I am one to uh, make a lot of French fries. My grandkids call them uh, Nana fries. There's Nana tea, Nana fries, Nana eggs. I make a certain way of making my eggs that my grandkids like. So they always say, Nana, can we have Nana eggs? <laughs> yeah. So grandkids are a blessing. Here we go. I haven't seen that, any of them for so long. It's, uh, I, I do miss having Hunter around. That's the youngest one there, but we, he sent me a video of him uh, riding his bicycle. He's so proud of finally getting that down and being able to turn corners without, you know, having to put his feet out. So I just watched that. It's so cute. He's waving at me. Yeah. You know, if you watch my tutorials, Hunter always joins me if he's here to do something as far as crafting, you know, get his little hands in there. So here we go. Love, love, love this style of wood grain paper in any collection. You have, I like the lines. I like lines going one way, lines going the other way. And this was my motivation to make my own paper. I, decide, I was going through my stash and I found uh, some, I'm going to tell you what, what it was. It was eight. All you had to do was either squirt it with, um, um, you know, your sprays and it had the images, image, you know, the resist. The images would resist to your ink or your sprays. And I'm going to see who makes that. Just a second. I want to mention just one thing, because this is not a design team project, I'm able to mention the supplies that I did use outside of uh, using my Creative Spirit uh, supplies that Claire carries in her store. So I wanted to do this project and dedicate it to my Creative Spirit, to Claire, uh, more so as a thank you for choosing me as uh, representing my creative spirit it's just you know I could go on and on I'm truly grateful and uh, you know when that happens I don't like to say you know use too many other products I try to keep it to maybe 20% of other products because you do have to use stash products even if you're 
doing a design team product, you have to use some other things to put the project together. Um, and I don't like to name off everything. I like to use as much as what is given to me to create with, right? But uh, this is not, I haven't got anything to design with right now. And I know that uh, Claire carries the scrap mirror papers, the Graphic 45, which is similar, all of these beautiful papers. So I wanted to do a project right now until I'm able to get supplies and product and dedicate it to my creative spirit and have my uh, subscribers go over and say hello and go over and check out. I'll leave the link so you can see the other five ladies that were chosen to design for uh, one year for 2020. And it's I think she, uh, Claire said it was the first time she has her own design team members. Can you believe it? And I was chosen. I mean, uh, I'm not going to go on because I'm just so, so grateful. And um, yeah, you can see how the wings come up. So I fussy cut all these little butterflies from the paper collection because I found that the purple was too much for me. It was not in, yeah, it just stuck out too much. And I didn't want to redo that. And you can see how I'm lifting that out, right? So anyway, let's get back to, I found in my stash, I was at Michael's one time and they had the Heidi Swap specialty card stock. It was $16.99 and I got it for $3.99 a pack. So there's 12 sheets, eight by eight, and it has a uh, resist. Like you'll have polka dots and they will resist anything you put over top of it. So they've already been, you know, embossed into the paper and you'll see me use it along there. And then this is one of the pearls. You know, I got one of those spools of, well, I got many of them uh, at the dollar store and nothing's a dollar. I think that's double the amount here of little pearls all joined together. So I'm able to use that as a tuck spot. So I got out the uh, butterfly specialty card stock and I put down a piece of the cardstock that had the, um, you know, that looked like, um, oh, I'm trying to think of the word. It just, uh, it looked like wood. <laughs> you can't think of wood, Carol. No, my mind's going crazy watching this. Here I'm just putting a border on each one of these uh, little cards that were in the cardstock so that you could put. Uh, either a picture but you know I really like uh, using these to write down a little memory of what pictures you have just to write something down you know of what the picture was you have plenty of room to do that on these little cards so that's kind of nice so I put a piece of paper out the wood grain paper there it is it's all coming back to me now and I made um, some um, specialty paper from the butterfly resist 8x8 cardstock there and now like I said I use the Heidi or I use the Zyron when I do my albums sorry about that I must be getting an email in and then make sure you rub them down like this so that the glue goes to the back you know sometimes when you peel things off like that um, yeah, it can uh, get stuck on where you don't want the sticky to be. And I'm just going over the edges now. I had them with the tiny little edge, you know, with the punch. I did, the corners were in the small one. You know, you get the eighth of an inch one, and then there's the larger one, the half inch. And I wanted it to be a little larger like that. You can see it on there. So I'm placing down now my large... Yeah, there goes my scissors. I didn't cut that one off properly. And then when you put your ink on it, isn't this quick than having to put the, uh, you know, the double-sided tape on there? It's so much quicker to run it through the Xyron. And if you get your Xyron when it's on sale at Michael's, you know, they will take the 40% off of it sometimes. Sometimes you can't get that off, but sometimes I've been there and the lady will take 40% off. 
I think it's a product. I think Zyron isn't a product to use coupons with, but sometimes they, I'm in there so often, they just say, here you go, you're spending, you know, so much. Just, uh, we'll take it off that for you. And that's really kind. And you know, I have to put glue. It's easier to put glue because if you have Zyron tape, you're not lifting this up without destroying the paper, truly. You need to have, uh, sometimes, you know, like here, I'm able to measure it easily from the top down. But, uh, yeah, so here I'm just taking a little bit off, and it worked for me. I was really happy I didn't uh, scissor this to death and make a lot of mistakes where I had to redo it. And it's like a vintage look, right? So you, the being so precise goes out the window when you're doing things more with a shabby chic vintage look to your work. And I like that too. It takes a lot of stress away from you as you're creating. And then I go over all the edges when they're already down. And uh, yeah, I was having a blast, let me tell you. Just adding a little bit here onto my page. And this is where I had the fold over with that uh, half circle here. So I've got a tuck space on the half moon um, die cut going on and then the butterflies will flip out and I'll have a tuck spot with the pearls and it's all has all of these pages have magnets it's all magnetized I love that I was going to put these corners down but you know what it forces you to have a certain size picture to put in there so I decided against it and put them back in my stash so I really did like this and I think I'm gonna proceed oh I put a strip of the pearls down each one of the uh, pages you know it's the little spine edges isn't this a oh right there in the middle I put pearls down the middle of all these and these lie perfectly flat oh and please leave Claire a message that you saw this video and uh, that you were inspired if you were inspired. And I know Claire will inspire you with all of her work. So here we go. I'm going with silver. Kind of like the, yeah, a little bit of silver to this. I liked that corner. I kept putting gold. I kept putting silver. And silver won out for me. And then you want to have your E6000 for putting your metal down. Take off that spongy, sticky stuff on the back of your metals and uh, so that the actual piece will lie flat for you. And uh, I'm just, it started to come alive to me now. This is where I start getting excited. And I, the back page, I couldn't wait to put a window back there, a shaker window, and then design it with my beads like do some bead work I haven't done. And these little clips are from the dollar store where nothing's a dollar. You get eight of them for $1.25. So that's really nice to have. I love the plastic, but boy, do they pinch. They're really good. Sometimes it's good to have a real secure pinchy tool, but you have to be careful because it, to be mindful because it oozes the glue out if, if it's really tight. So here we go. We've got those little wildflowers on the bottom. This is going to be the back page. Got a bit of glue on there. And look at that. Don't you love it when something starts coming together? It just takes the weight off of, um, you know, the creative part. There's so many things you can do to create. Here comes the granddaddy Zyron. I'm going to run my window through and my paper. Whatever can go through a Zyron machine when I'm making a project, I use it. I just find it quick. It saves me time. And Zyron is fantastic as far as the tape. It is. It's just wonderful. And I didn't even put uh, wet glue. I'm surprised. I took a chance on that. And look at, isn't that gorgeous? And here's the window I'm going to put down. And of course, we're going to do another shaker. I happen to have two 
of those little scientific vials that the beads came in and they were the same color. So I was really happy about that. I think I put some black in with the lilac colored ones and there were some silver little beads in with it. It was really pretty. So here we are. This is where we've gotten to. Um, oh, I want it. You know me with my laces. I just wanted to use some trims. I thought it would be so pretty on the sides. I have, you know, I'm not used to doing all paper albums, like totally paper. I, I have done albums with just using lace and beadwork and bridal gown, um, beautiful satins. And you know me, I bought up a lot of them and bagged them into uh, so that I could save on having the beadwork because that's expensive and then I just pack them up in little packages and that way I can use it for projects and isn't that pretty because it has this French romantic theme running through it this just it did it for me I really liked it and uh, I don't think it took away from the paper you know uh, it's my style of how I like to do things, and uh, I know that uh, Claire will appreciate that because that's the one thing she mentioned. She wanted, she picked us by the style we design, like, you know, does that make sense? It wasn't because we design like uh, Claire. Um, I, I could never get that, that uh, good. <laughs> Uh, I'm just being honest, you know, this is just a learning curve for me, but I love it. That's the key. If you love what you do, you have fun and uh, you don't mind, you know, waiting it out until you get uh, how to design, what to put where, um, what works here, what works there. I'm using hot glue on these pearls and I found it really pretty. Um, you know, I could have used the paper, it's true. I could have used paper, but I thought the the beadwork here just went with the paper style, you know, with that French kind of romantic theme. So I put this through every page in the center of the spine of the pages. And it stayed, it was wonderful with the hot glue. Yeah, I'm just, I had to erase all of that uh, marker. I used those white pencils, those uh, cement pencils, you know. That's all I can think of how you call them. And here we go. We're just moving along. Now the next thing is the door. So putting, I want, or excuse me, window. I put the acetate sheet already down, and then I'm doing it the same way with the Doris spin strips doing it too high uh, so I have room for those little uh, seed beads to move around. And I like the fact that I had enough to match the front and the back. The thing about this is <laughs> you have to keep that page pretty still before, oh I added green because there was green to those flowers and you want to put that thing down, the window down right away. I didn't want those seed beads rolling all over and having to sweep that off the floor. No way. So I always put the seed beads down on the flat portion in a pile and then I put my image. Now I'm taking an applicator and going over it with the Distress Ink. Probably the Seedless Preserves. One of them. I like both of those colors that I said and the I think it's, is it Wilted Violet? I think is the other one. And then I just have a paper towel to wipe it off so I don't have a ton. But I did like to put the edges nice and dark. And uh, now we're going to roll out the stems. I like to use these style flowers. I, I'm not sure if these are, uh, we are roses or I bought them so long ago I can't even remember but I like the long stems on them and I like that they're paper flowers made from paper. I like to create my own flowers too if I have time but uh, 
here I'm just picking out some stamps. I was thinking I was, oh, I used this die right there to make a tuck spot as well on the back of the bead tuck spot. So uh, this is, this is I had these little crates that I got at the dollar store when I think it's a dollar, and I filled them when I'm creating. So I will put the supplies I think I'm going to use because it's easier to have them all in a crate and pick from that because I can move the crate. It's harder to have everything around me because I work my way into such a small spot. Whew, yes, but we all know that if you watch my channel that I'm, I end up using a tiny space when I have all this space to create on. It's really funny. But uh, now I needed to cut these down. And the only way to do that properly is to put a little bit of uh, tape roll, you know, your runner tape behind, just a little bit, just enough to hold it onto a sheet of paper. This way I can maneuver the strips properly. I don't have to hold the, the small strip and try to get it over there when I'm cutting. It's placed on the paper. I can maneuver the paper really well and get the exact measurement I'm looking for to cut. And uh, it's really, and see how easy it comes off, and it's the perfect size, and it gives me some stability when I'm cutting. Now comes the let's get some stuff. I needed this to dry, and uh, so the E6000 went on the back, and I uh, just took the snap part off, you know, the, the latch, I took it off the back. And then we're just going to let this dry. I loved this brooch. I have a thing for cameos. I just love anything with cameos. And I did have some um, a cameo cardboard collection of all sizes of cameos. I never thought to get that out. And here are some acetate pages that I had in my stash that I used to use the, fuel to, the fuse tool. So you can choose whatever... Um, whatever you like to use. If it's thin, yeah, look at all these. The one that's seated on the top there, uh, that's the one that worked the best for me. That, uh, I'm trying to get it down here. Um, let me see here. This is all, this has a secure flap. I thought of using that. That My page protectors don't work with the fuse tool. It's too thick. So I just kind of set those aside and then I'll see which one works. And then I'm going, I thought, okay, I have these uh, butterfly, there they are, but they have butterflies, I'm stuttering here, a stuttering butterfly, and they have circles and lines and all kinds of goodness. So I'm just testing it out if I, you know, used my sprays, my distress sprays, and I found that too wet. I just didn't like the look of that. It was just too wet. Well, I'm back. <laughs> I got halfway mark and uh, had to stop because there was too much noise happening downstairs. And now I'm in quiet for a little bit. So I'm going to start up again. Now, as you can see, the wet thing was not good. It wasn't happening. It just, this type of paper that it's almost like uh, halfway between a thick uh, collection paper and cardboard it's it's a nice consistency actually to work with um, it didn't work and I love these butterflies that I had in my stash these Martha Stewart butterflies and like I said I'm going to try and incorporate whatever I can into this album out of my stash I really had a blast but I'm going to tell you I'm looking at it and I'm only halfway through the voiceover. <laughs> Can you imagine putting up a 55 hour video? That would be hysterical. Yes. So this is what you get, my friends. We're just going to have a gab fest. Now, E6000, I bought them in these small tubes. You know, you get three small ones because I found once you broke into the large E6000, uh, it would harden up and I'd always be snipping it to get some glue out. So I really like the smaller version. 
of E6000 and I did use it because the bicycle is metal and it does have gesso on it to take up some of the black that uh, and that's from Michaels too. It's in the accessories that you get for mini houses and things like that. I didn't even know they had a section like that. I thought that's awesome. I'd like to clean a mini house one time <laughs> instead of this big farmhouse. <laughs> Yes, so anyway, my hubsters, he's doing uh, uh, something in the basement. He's taking on a new job down there, and he, he's, uh, but he's outside, so I says, okay, I'm going to run in and just do some of my voiceover, and he said, go for it. I'll see how long I can stand outside. <laughs> that was nice of him, wasn't it? So here we go. I went and grabbed some of my wooden stamps that I haven't used forever. I love this. I love sayings, you know. Uh, I like to get scripture stamps too. I, I never thought to get them out. But I like sayings that are uh, inspiring, you know. At this time uh, in the house, like everybody is in the house now, you know, or around your house or whatever. I think it's good to be encouraged and to know that the Lord is looking out for us and we have nothing to fear. So, but fear itself and, you know, you don't want to be fretful. So let's craft and laugh together. Hello. Love that big white smile there. It's awesome. So let's move forward. I am just going to stamp as many of these acetate sheets trying to get it down. You know, you can see you have a light hand. Oh, I got it good on that one. And then I thought, oh, I think that's the key. Just press it down and pull it right back up. And there you go. Although I do like it dark, but I think I got a little wee bit to the right. Kind of slid a bit. Even with stays on, you know, plastic, that's what it does. So here I go. Down up. Carol, what are you doing? Oh, that one worked. Isn't that nice? And uh, you were in my thoughts and in my prayers. That's a lovely stamp. And I used that in the album. I'm just uh, showing you some of the wooden stamps. And when, when I do albums, it's hard for me to just uh, stay with just the paper. I have to add a few things uh, to it. I don't know why. I mean, you do want to accentuate the paper you're using, of course. And I saw this morning that Claire had an absolutely beautiful album up on YouTube. Gorgeous. Graphic 45 album. You have to run over and check it out. It's absolutely stunning. And um, I'll get there one day where I just accentuate the paper and uh, but for now, this is the way I work. And, you know, when you're used to doing some things, it's hard to change, isn't it? You know, it's like when you get up, you're, I'm used to certain things that I do right away. And uh, for somebody to say, oh, you don't need to do that, or you don't need to uh, make the bed right away, just close the door. <laughs> well, what if somebody opened my door? I've done that forever. I don't know about you. It's just one of the things I always get up and then immediately make the bed. And uh, then I can start brekkie. But uh, I had sausages and eggs today. We bought some fresh sausage. It was delicious. So I thought, hmm, I think my husband's just getting a tad spoiled. As far as food, uh, he's probably thinking right now, what's for lunch? <laughs> yeah, you know... When you, we've been married, we dated five years before we were married, so we've been together 51 years, I think now, 51 years. I was 15, he was 17, and uh, so we know each other like a book. It's really funny because I said to him, why don't you come upstairs and do the voiceover with me? And he said, well, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> What am I supposed to do that you can't do, Carol? You want me to talk? Like, I don't know anything you're doing there. And I said, that's the fun of it. You know, it'd be like you telling me to do something with uh, your uh, heating. 
business, you know, like to go in and say, oh, ma'am, I'll put that in for you today. Here's my helper. <laughs> oh, dear. Yes, you can tell. I'm passing the time here. Isn't that a nice stamp, too? That says love with the little birds in the tree. Never, I don't, I don't think I've used that stamp uh, on a project. A lot of these wooden stamp, I, I can't even tell you how many stamps I have. It, it's unbelievable. I used to go crazy, you know. And then I found out you could order the uh, stamps online, you know, the photopolymer stamps. And then I went nuts on that. And uh, so obviously I like to incorporate. I've never used that, um, that one that you're looking at, the hinge. I think it's a beautiful stamp for mixed media or journaling. It's really nice. So I'm just putting my stays on ink cleaner on here. This is how I do it at the end. I rub it all on. I get some baby wipes. I set the baby wipes over top, kind of gather them together, set them on there to soak up the ink. And then as much as I can get up with doing it like this, that's what I do. I don't go crazy because you're not going to, with stays on ink, you're not going to have clean stamps. So once you get that down and you can live with that, it doesn't bother you. You just let it dry. You know you did the best you can. And uh, there you have it. So let's move on. I had this little B envelope. It made the envelope, envelope, uh, either way. It made the little tag part and it made the flip. Just, you know, I had this in my stash that's never been used. And I thought, look at that, I am going to do this and make a little envelope to put into my fuse pockets. And it's just lovely. And little bee stamps are lovely to have because they come with their own magnet. Um, you know, they rest on a magnet page and then they close and then all the instructions. So here I'm just showing you all the loveliness of these pages. And these are just... Uh, pages that I had in my stash for, I think I got them at a thrift store actually, pretty sure I did. And uh, because I find the flimsier the acetate, the better it cuts with the fuse tool. So that's a little tidbit right there. You know, sometimes I like thick, I like thickness a lot in a lot of things that I do, but not with the fuse tool. You have to have a thin acetate so that the two acetates can connect and fuse together, right? So here's another die that I had. I think this, yes, this is a little bead die as well. And I cut that out and I'm going to use it in a fuse pocket. I think pockets are lovely and I really had to smile when I was watching your video, Claire, if you're watching this. You had acetate pages in your album. <laughs> I didn't get my album up quick enough. Yes, and I had the same thing. I worked with acetate and I love it. And you know, I couldn't wait to use my fuse tool. You know, there's some things that I have in my stash I've never opened. So, and I'm ashamed to say that. I just have not got around to having a use for it yet, but I will. I will, like the Fuse tool. I'll be incorporating quite a few of these in my albums in the future. And now we're going to make our own colored pockets with our, uh, what is this, my Tim, it's uh, Distress Inks. I'm trying to think of what these these are here. Are they Adirondack inks? I can't tell. Isn't that something? But um, they're for putting on acetate anyway, whatever they are. And um, so I'm going to find some matchy matchy colors. I just get my tins out and take a look see. It's another thing I don't use enough of and I have to incorporate because they're absolutely beautiful. I'm going, I need, I'm looking for a certain color and I can't find it. So I'm going to go to my stash and get out, see if I have it in another bucket and use it. Plus you want to use your, um, all that clear stuff. Aren't I terrible? 
I tell you what, it's the, uh, it's not the toner, it's the blending solution. I just went and checked it out and I had this voiceover almost finished and realized that I unplugged my microphone. <laughs> so from this point forward to the end, I had it all voiced over and looked down and noticed that my uh, microphone wasn't plugged in, so I'm starting it over. So let's see if I can remember what I was talking about here. I was talking about alcohol inks and the blending solution, right? And the funny thing is, I don't know why I'm going into the pinks like this, because there isn't a bright pink in this whole paper line. I'm just grabbing another sheet, and that's what I'm going to do. Like, instead of grabbing a paper towel, this way I have two sheets of acetate. And, um, yeah, so that was interesting. I sat down to just finish the last few minutes and looked down and I didn't plug in my microphone. That was terrific. But those things happen and you have to move right along and not worry about it. So like I was saying with this, it's nice to add color to your acetate to match your project. That's what I did here. And then when I made the pocket, to put it in, I just uh, took an alcohol wipe and I toned it down. I just put it on the inside and wiped it down so that it wasn't so uh, vivid, especially when I put the pink um, uh, vellum inside the paper, the vellum paper. I used to get vellum and acetate so confused all the time on my tutorials. It was crazy. You know, you have a mindset, but it is pink vellum. I love colored vellum. The beadies, the place where I get my stationery and my business products for our business, business supplies, um, they sell colored vellum. And uh, I really appreciate that because you can get it, you know, 10 colors a piece. You don't have to, you know, they'll do it per pack. Like if you want 25 or you want 50, whatever, if you want two, you can do that as well. So I always try to pick up a few sheets of uh, paper and it's nice to do calligraphy on colored vellum as well. Okay so here we go. We are going to fuse this and if you have a fuse tool I'd love to hear if you got it out. These are nice to put in the center of cards to put a um, gift card in. You know and uh, I save gift cards to, um, you know, scrape and stuff with. And every now and again, when it's one of my grandkids' birthdays, <laughs> I have this $100 gift card that I got. And some um, somebody got it uh, in my family from us. And then they gave it back because they knew I like to swipe with a gift card. So I kept it. So I put it in their birthday cards every year, and then I take it back. So they open up and they go, oh, you didn't have to do that, Nan. Thanks, Papa. And then I say, don't thank Papa. We didn't do it. That's That doesn't have any money in it. <laughs> then I give them a real one. Yeah, I'm not that cruel. But, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's my humor. And I remember when my boys were really young, we didn't... Uh, you know, we didn't have much money, and um, so what I did, he, my son, I asked him what he wanted for his birthday, and he said he wanted, um, I'm just looking at the images that I had stamped on this acetate while I'm yakking, and he said he wanted a leather coat. Can you imagine a leather coat? And I'm thinking, that's, like, I was thinking maybe he'd like a set of pens or something, <laughs> you know, a big pen and a pencil. Uh, a perfect set uh, but <laughs> so <laughs> there was no way I could get him a pleather jacket let alone a leather jacket so I went to the Sears catalog remember the Sears catalogs and I cut out a picture of a leather jacket and I put on it someday this will be yours and then I put it with uh, whatever gift I had gotten him and I hear that to this day I do like they they all, you know, when you get together for Christmas and stuff, they talk about all the things that tortured them when they were a youth. 
And uh, that's good because it left a memory, right? You want to do that when, you know, your kids are young. And uh, even if they don't like it, if you find humor in it, it's great. So they all laugh at it now. There is the um, paper I was telling you about. $16.99. I got it for $3.99. That's amazing. But first I'm going to slide this little province tag that was in the paper that I cut out at the bottom here and uh, it matches the, it kind of adds something to the butterfly and the little ladybug. Oh, I haven't seen any ladybugs this year. That's good. I don't know if it is good. They say uh, in Ontario they're supposed to be bad with ticks in the grass even now and we haven't even hit the hot uh, weather yet. So, you know, a good cure for that is chickens. You put them out in the yard and they eat the ticks and you're fine, you know. But I don't know if you live in the city whether that's uh, good, <laughs> a good idea. But uh, anywho, that's just a little tidbit for your information. If you're a farmer, you know what I'm talking about. Now we're going to get along really good because we are going to go to the butterflies in this beautiful paper. There's nothing like a beautiful monarch butterfly. When I see it in my yard, oh, my shattered nerves, they're beautiful with all those colors in their wings. Just gorgeous. So now I have the, what I wanted to mimic here in the colors of the collection. If you run out of paper in your collection, you can do just this, you know. Uh, stamp with uh, Versamark and put uh, clear emboss or white embossing powder on, heat set it, and then you have this, you know, the same effect on here. You can get, you know, match the images and you'll have the resist with the butterflies like this and it makes for a beautiful page, you know, and you can do pages and I love these oxide colors. Oh. The gray with that dull pink and the green, isn't that beautiful? That is my favorite combo right there. I just love it. I, I threw in the wilted violet uh, just because, but oh, look at that. Favorites, favorites, and that's the um, something lavender. I can't even see that. You can see the lavender. It is... Wow, I can't even see that and I have my glasses on. That's terrible. Oh well, you can probably. <laughs> I realize I must have to get my glasses checked or something. Oh, there it is. It's illed, now grilled lavender. What, what am I seeing there? Spilled lavender, uh, filled lavender. Oh, I'm going to have to go over and see what that is. But um, it's pretty. That's what that is. And, oh, it's doing it again. That's terrible. I'm, I'm wasting time because I can't read that. Just a second. It's a real nice surface on this uh, piece of, you know, semi-cardboard I'd like to call it and it really did come in close to the collection so I was really happy just adding a little bit more of the violet and then we're going to give it the look of that uh, wood grain sheet which is really nice and I'll just take a paper towel and go over the resist on the um, right there yep I've already done this <laughs> once before so it's Look how fast I'm going. Can you believe that? That's crazy. But if I didn't speed it up, you'd be with me for a few days. And I don't think anybody would enjoy that. So here we go. Just wiping her down. And then we're going to drag the white color box. I like it because it's a pigment ink. It, it does stay wet. And you are going over the oxide ink. So you have to... Um, go over it and over it for it to stay there and you want to put a little bit of pressure on the side of your ink pad to get the look of lines on there and I think you can see 
the colors come to life right there. I'm looking over at that wood piece and the butterflies to hone in on the colors that are in the collection and trying to get them on this sheet. And it will save you paper, especially if you're doing a large album. This is nice to do, to just take a stamp that you have that matches and as you can see to the right, it's butterflies. And the resist looks really nice. And then I took some brown Distress ink. Then over top of that, I'm going to do another slide of the color box white and, you know, rub it into the uh, oxide ink. And uh, it's looking, it's going the exact, I couldn't get anything closer, to tell you the truth, to match the colors that's in this collection. It really did add to it. A little bit brighter, but that's okay. I was satisfied with that. And then I'm going to get out that huge honkin' stampin' up uh, Le Francais, I think it's called, with the beautiful penmanship on it. I just love this stamp. I don't think I could get rid of it at all, you know. Uh, it just has beautiful script on it. And you just want to pounce it here and there to get the look. It's, if you notice to the right on the wood grain paper, it does have script on there. I think it's more typing script, but nonetheless, it pulls it together with this stamp and then I'll just brush it off and put it away and there you have it. You can only see a tad bit of the actual print and that's the same as in the um, paper. Now, uh, boy, that white is really coming in handy. Just slide that up and down and bring the paper up so it's not so bright. Pounce back down with a little bit of ink on your stamp and you're in. I think I heat set it and wipe off the resist on the butterflies with a paper towel. And there you have it. It's uh, a beautiful sheet of paper and I just gave it a nice quick uh, air dry. And we're off and running. Now I'm going to cover these magnets. Oh, yeah, there we go. Put some more liquid on there and over top of the magnets. It's really funny because uh, when you do the voiceover the second time, like I am, it could be the third time, I'm delirious, <laughs> uh, you never say the same things, you know? You never think the same uh, from one voiceover to another on the project, so it's kind of nice. It's kind of what I feel like right now when I am doing this at five o'clock, supper time. I just finished uh, feeding everybody uh, cheeseburgers and home fries, of course, the quick meal, the quick picker-upper meal, and uh, everybody's fed up, and I ran upstairs doing a voiceover, doing a voiceover, and the reason is I don't have a door in the top of the second level of our home, so whatever's going on downstairs in the first level, they that you hear it with my um, Blue Getty mic, I think it's called, picks up everything, everything. It's crazy, nice uh, microphone, but it's not good when you don't have a door onto your uh, craft room. So generally, you know, my husband be working and the house would be all mine and I could do voiceovers until my voice ran out but not these last two days. It's just like, whoa, you know, I'm not used to this. But you have to do what you have to do, right? I really like this little uh, piece that magnetizes. And like I said, the reason why I did magnetize all of the acetate is because it slides. And there's nothing worse to open up a book and everything's falling out. So as many, I think 90% of them have magnets and the other ones just slid inside to hold down some pictures inside the um, pockets. So there you have it. And what's really funny, I didn't put that there. I don't know what I was measuring, but I had so many measuring dots on there with the pencil. When I went to take my trimmer, I didn't know what I was trimming for. <laughs> yeah, that was not going there. So then I thought, no, I have to make uh, something to go into this pocket. No, actually I put it in a butterfly pocket. 
I changed my mind. Of course, we can't change your mind, right? So I thought, okay, I'm going to take this and I'm going to make a flip. You know, flip it up, flip it to the side, and flip it the other way. I love those. I'm just getting the hang of doing the magnets. And yeah, I'm trying to find, where's your home? I don't know what to do with you. And then all of a sudden it hit me. Do a picture flap. See, look at this. I'm telling you, I did not know. <laughs> when I got it to the trimmer, I was going crazy. Like, what are all these lines on here? Yeah, so I started over and I really liked it behind the Bible. I thought that was very nice too. And then when I thought of putting it across from butterflies, I thought, oh, yeah, I'll have to do that butterfly stamp with the uh, flourishes behind it. It's really pretty. So here we go. I'm just uh, measuring here. This is that uh, opal wedding paper that I got a pack, couple packs at Michael's. And um, I really love I love it as a background for this because it really pops out those butterflies like crazy. So I thought, okay, I'll have one to the side, boop, right in there, one flipping up and one flipping over. And it was perfect. I had so much fun creating this, even though it took me a week. Um, yeah, eight, let me see, eight hours a day, or yeah, probably six hours a day. Trying to figure out 50, what, 55, almost 56 hours of work time. So that means you have to be having fun to spend that much time on it. And because you're, you do, and I'm not using my scissors. Yay. Right, Tina? Stay away from those scissors. Now I'm thinking, now I know what I'm going to do with this paper. And I love creating my own paper. I have to say, I do. If I have a few sheets and I want to save them, I'll just take a sheet of paper and mimic what the print is and use my inks because we all have a lot of, you know, inks lying around and I'm really not a stamper with inks. I don't know why I collected so many, but you learn that later. And, uh, you know, I often attribute it to the fact that, you know, when your children are small, that's why I bought everything in thrift stores and secondhand stores. Well, mainly because of the price. But because, you know, by the time you get them out of the hospital, to they're three months old when you blink your eye and nothing fits. So you don't care if you're paying 20 cents for a little bib or, you know, a buck for a 90. Or a, I don't even know what they call them anymore. <laughs> for their pajamas, I guess. Yes, yeah. So, you know, my kids are in their 40s, so makes a big difference. And uh, now I'm really liking retirement and uh, loving creating and spending time with you, especially. We're spending a lot of time today, aren't we? I don't know if I should have really made this, uh, sped this up even faster so that you didn't have to uh, listen to me but I thought it'd be kind of nice to see how I put it all together so you're just putting a book you know cut out a book page cut out a smaller one and then a smaller one yet and then add them to the bigger bookcase and you can see that I ripped the paper there which would have been fine but it gave me an excuse to use one of those butterflies so I was cool with that that's a okay so in the comments, I'd love to know what you're keeping busy at now that, uh, you know, if you're used to going out to work and now you're having to stay home, um, what you're filling your time with. If you're getting more crafting in or getting your house chores done instead, I pick, I pick crafting over that. <laughs> Although we have to have that done, yes. I get it but I'll tell you what uh, when I worked um, I got far more things done in my home than I do now I procrastinate now so I'll look at something you know some cupboards or your pantry or whatever and I'll just say yeah I've got lots of time to do that I'll do that tomorrow and tomorrow turns into tomorrow which turns into tomorrow 
So you do what you have to do. And uh, yeah, this is for fun. This creating thing. Oh, there they are. Aren't these gorgeous? I could not resist these when I saw them. Just the beautifulness of the sheen to them, you know? It, it just matched perfectly, and I've had them forever. I really have. So I'm going to cover up my mess there. And don't you love the paper? I really do. I really love the resist on that. And you can do it with any stamp. So that's why I kept this in there. I'm going to use it as a tuck. Uh, snip and tuck. Is that what they call these? I don't know. No, that's all you need, Carol. Don't put another one in there, please. I'm looking at it and thinking, no, no, no. But do I? I might. I'm thinking about it. Do I put one right there? I guess I do because I'm rubbing that thing in there. If I take it off, oh, another tuck spot, I guess. There we go. And you have some writing room. And uh, I also saw that Claire over on My Creative Spirit has a sale going on. The, I think it's for the PDF files, if I'm right. And uh, go over and check that out. You will love, love her work. And, you know, I didn't, I did start out showing all of the measurements in the edit. Like I did write everything down. I was really good like that. But I'm really not one to, um, I don't know, to uh, teach you how to put the album together at the beginning because uh, I haven't done them enough. And Claire is so good at it that I just thought, I'm just going to send you over there because you'll get it precise. And then if you want to copy or, uh, you know, get some inspiration, there's that one stamp I used right there with the tree and the butterfly. Isn't that beautiful? Then you can come back and maybe get some inspiration on what I shared with you through this tutorial. And uh, But if you're going to make an album, you'll love it. You'll enjoy her, and I know you do. If you do albums, of course, you watch her channel. So here we go, the old field Fuse tool. It was sitting around so long, I almost forgot what it's supposed to do. And of course, to fuse stuff together. And I'm having a blast with it, as you can tell. And I do have the, excuse me, the other two um, Fuse tool rulers, the one that makes the filigree and that. And uh, I put them away and, you know, they were in the place that I, I couldn't remember where I put them. So I had to go back to my, uh, this ruler, which I really like because of the cork underneath it. It keeps it firm onto the acetate. So that was good. And, uh, yeah, so the fuse tool does, you can get accessories with it and I do have them. But, uh, at the time I didn't know what I did with them. Now I know where they are because I was looking, you know how we look for something else and then we find what we were looking for before. So we grab that and then we either forget what we were looking for or we say forget it. <laughs> That's what I do. Isn't this beautiful? This is a lovely way to put your memorabilia in your pictures and things of that nature. I wish I had got caught on to this concept when my children were younger. We had baby books, and I did keep up with baby books uh, for my first child. <laughs> my other two kids think they're adopted. <laughs> we just didn't, you know, uh, we didn't have the money back then. We were talking 40, 40 odd years ago. And, uh, you know, I it was just a different thing. I didn't hear about scrapbooking or keeping all your stuff. So you end up putting all your pictures in boxes if you did have pictures. Because remember back then, you had to take them in and with your Polaroid, your Kodak camera and get them developed. And guess what? That cost money. And uh, money was not uh, as abundant. So I'm trying to be nice about it. <laughs> That's the way it was. We lived off the land. We lived up north. I uh, had a garden and we lived right on the lake and we went hunting for our food. And that's the way we lived when our kids were young. And it was by necessity. And we had a house with wood burning stove 
and an Elmira wood stove to cook on. And I, it truly was Little House on the Prairie style of uh, many years when my children were young and they loved that. They went outside to play. They, we didn't have electronics. We didn't have, I mean, I cooked with, the, uh, with wood and we heated the house with wood. And so we would be continually chopping wood and putting it in the wood box and bringing the wood box in the house. And this honking great big fireplace would heat up the upper level and the lower level. And that was the day, I'm telling you, to just go out in your garden. And we had a sauna out the back we would walk to when, in the winter time, and it would heat you up and then you would come in the house and hopefully you got home uh, early enough to start the fire. You know, we got it down on how to keep the fire going for most of the day and most of the evening. So that was good. But I'll tell you what, cords and cords and cords of wood when you live up north and um, yeah so we're used to that and we just love the farm life and we love that end of it you know having cows and chickens and eggs available nothing like fresh eggs I'll tell you that um, and you do taste the difference it doesn't matter what people say fresh eggs are amazing here I'm just putting the antennas off I didn't have the patience to cut them out when I was doing that <laughs> remember I did on that one butterfly I didn't hear I chopped them off it was quick and easy look how it sits on the magnets isn't that wonderful it's just wonderful the two just two little magnets and then all of these just blink, blink, blink. they just attach themselves I love this and then you put them on the other butterflies then you've got butterflies to the right Get that flower off, Carol, please. Oh my, I don't know what I was thinking there. Yeah, it just flew off. It knew what to do before I did it, I think. Yeah, so anyway, that's a little bit of a tidbit of how I raised our boys. Like I said, I homeschooled. And uh, so, you know, it was really Little House on the Prairie. When you see that, it truly was. We lived way off the beaten path. And we did have, we used to get our blueberries, our Saskatoons, our, um, all of our berries actually we went picking for and um, there was bears and you had to know where you were going and uh, knew what you were doing I'll tell you that but there's nothing like that kind of a life and here I'm taking off some of the pink. I did notice it was just too much hot pink with that pink vellum behind there. So all you do is take an alcohol wipe. I get those at the dollar store where nothing's a dollar. You get a big box of them and uh, just rub it off and then it didn't uh, stand out so much. And then look at this. No, you want to showcase that beautiful brooch, Carol. And you don't want to do that because it would rip. And then I thought, okay, I went to my uh, apothecary there. You know how I have those 60 drawers filled with ribbon. 60 drawers of ribbon, can you imagine? And I got out this cotton ribbon. I can remember when I bought it at Michael's years ago. And it's corrugated. Oh, and then I took my glossy accents or my crystal lacquer. And I did a lot of the ephemera here. I'm getting the lingo down. I'm telling you, yes, you can tell I'm getting a little bit more serious about this uh, album making and collections and things. This is the ephemera. Instead of calling it the cutouts, you know, and uh, my grandson was just asking me what I did when I was little, like his age, five. And I said, oh, I had doll buggy and uh, little baby dolls and cutouts. He didn't even know what they were. I said, oh yeah, we had cutouts and we'd make our own paper doll dresses out of paper. And that was the time, you know, hopscotch out on the sidewalk. And it was a wonderful era to live in, in the 50s and 60s. So anyway, yeah, I think that's why I love being up in the wilderness so much and working off the land. I think it's uh, good for raising sons and I won't say anything else about that if that if you have opportunity it's great you know we were in a log cabin and um, 
think it was wonderful. Really made for some wonderful lot. Uh, we had five fishing poles out the back door that we would grab, I'd say about four o'clock and go down and get our fish if we were having fish dinner. Fresh fish and uh, a lot of walleye and pickerel and um, oh yes, tons of fish and berries homemade bread on the wood burning stove. The smell of that was just wonderful. And then you'd put the mittens on the top of the Elmira wood stove and it would dry your mittens in like four seconds. <laughs> that or light them on fire. <laughs> Depending what you were doing on the stove, right? Yes. So I thought I'd just share a little bit of my life with you and uh, where I, you know, and then I went into medicine and uh, I became a dental assistant. And then from there I became a, um, I worked for a, a surgeon and then I went into, I went back to school and went into orthodontics and that's where I retired. So uh, that's just a little bit of uh, where I, you know, I did all that after I'd we had homeschooled our children, priorities, you know, that was our priority there. And when they went off to college, then I was able to uh, get a career. And uh, that's what I chose. My sister was a hygienist, and I really enjoyed that. And, you know, I thought it was fantastic. So uh, that's what I did. Uh, went back to school and loved it. Challenging. I like a challenge, as you can tell. Then when I turned 60, I just said goodbye and walked away happily, very happily. And then I went on the internet and I found people making cards and I thought, wow, I can do that. I'll learn to do it. I just thought it was so relaxing to see people doing that, you know. And here I'm just cutting out. Look at that telephone. Isn't that gorgeous? I, I love antiques, like I said. So I drop into antique stores. I don't anymore because you can only have so much, you know, before you're putting it in closets and what good is that? So I stopped, uh, I did my craft room in antiques and uh, which is different from craft rooms that are all, oh, what is not pretty? Oh, I love that with the opal um, shaker bits, you know, I think it's so nice. And up at the top there where you see those long black strips, those are the belly bands that have the hearts on them. And they also have butterflies. So I chose to die cut the ones with the butterflies and then cut the butterflies off. But I have a swing tab that I put the, that beautiful black strip on the back of my swing tabs so that they had a design in the black to kind of match. And now I'm going to pick off all of these because I want to use them throughout the album. And I do use every one of them. And I think it's beautiful. Yes. So I cut this out, like I fussy cut this, because I wanted to put it to see if I could fuse it on top of an already fused uh, um, pocket. So uh, that's what I'm doing here. I'm just making, cutting it all out here, and then I'm going to cut this pocket out. And it saves me from having to go back and get the stamp and stamp it and wait for it to dry, yada, yada. I, you saw that I stamped a ton and I always store them in those Ziploc bags that I have there, those um, organizer thick bags I get at the at Beatty's, the stationery store. And look at that. I just fused it right on top. I put some flowers that were attached to that Bible and then there was a stamp, the leftover part of the Bible, so it worked out perfectly. And then I stuck some sequins in there, little stars, opal stars, get the magnets on where you can't see them. And we're going to put that on the album. Well, it's quarter to ten, and we're going to move right along. So here I put some magnets, like I said, on the back of the telephone because it wouldn't be so hard to see. And uh, the sequins just look beautiful in this pocket. I really love the look of this one. And do you see how I used that uh, lacy 
belly band die. I took the end off to use the hearts and then I'll incorporate this behind all of the swing tabs just to give it that something something to match the little bit of black going around and I think it uh, really looked really looked nice. I put the black board like the black paper behind it but then I put I glued down that beautiful trellis looking black paper design from the die the actual die. So here you can see I'm incorporating some of those um, crystal lacquer elements from the um, collection. You can tell I'm getting tired, can't you? It isn't just getting tired because I know I have to get this finished. It's because, you know, you're stopping to make dinner and then you're cleaning up and then your mind is on you know, doing a few things to call it an evening. And then when I get upstairs, I have to focus on this, which I love. Uh, it would be nice if I had started it this morning and didn't stop until I finished it. But, you know, when you don't plug in your mic. Now, here are those Scotch uh, business letter. They're for business cards. It has the glue on the one side, you know, the real sticky tape. And you can put anything in this and it sticks. And then once you put your paper in it, it has the lifted side of thick um, acrylic acetate. They're wonderful. And I think you get 50 in a box. I got quite a few of these uh, for some reason. I don't know if I got them for the craft room or for our business, but. I'll tell you what, I'm going to be incorporating these things into my albums for sure. And then the three inch Xyron comes in handy because a lot of your uh, ephemera is either three inches or less. You know, it just doesn't fit the one inch, but then the three inch is the keeper. So that's really good. And uh, like I said, it started to really rain here. And it's pitch black and this is the time I love to create at night and uh, especially when it's raining you just seem like this is the you can just get in the zone you know I love to listen to rain and here we go again I'm using one of these business letter uh, I don't know what you call them they, they're flip cards like I don't know where you would show your business card and then maybe uh, put the business card in there and then it would lift up if you had to show proof of your business or whatever that, that you couldn't have the plastic over it. That sounded good, but it made no sense. <laughs> so <laughs> let's just move right along, right? They're just cool to have and they're, uh, I think it said it was made by Kodak. Can't, I, we'll get back to that. I'll probably see one of them. And look at that. Just beauteous. You put one of your cards down on that beautiful white paper. You just frame around it. Slide it in here because it, the one side is totally sticky. It's just like you use the Xyron. And I, when I ran it through the Xyron, I made the sticky on the side of her face. I wanted her face to be sticky too so that that thick vellum comes down and rests on her face and look at that you wouldn't know it wasn't planted there for sure and then I'm going to put some brads in this so that I can run a ribbon with some of my um, cameos that I have in my jewelry stash and I tell you what I love getting my my jewelry stash out and working with it incorporating it into a project any project a card project an album project you know uh, making boxes for your album it's um, it has so much versatility so here I'm just making my little brads run the white crinkle ribbon the vintage ribbon through it then I'll glue two of the black cameos together on each side. That gives it some weight, right? I like the weight on that. And then you can open it up and add anything you want. A saying, a picture, a thought, a scripture verse, 
whatever you'd like to put inside here and then pull on the ribbon and it closes it and you can add a bow and I think it's just very shabby chic. It is really sweet. And um, so this was one little idea that I had. I'm just getting out my, or putting away one of my eyelets. And these are the things like the eyelets and the magnets and the fuse tool and um, the alcohol inks and using your stamps, your stays on, making cardstock to match cardstock that you already have in a collection. It's all of these things that add something wonderful to your project and it actually boosts your um, I don't know I don't like to use the word ego but it boosts your confidence that's what it is when you start to learn how to incorporate different uh, ideas into your books and uh, and I think Claire is right you don't want to be designing for somebody and doing the same thing that they do, you know, just copying it, just casing it, they used to call it. I think you need to um, follow their leading because they know what they're doing and then just incorporate your style to it. And that's what I'm doing here. So the butterflies seem to be the theme. And uh, I like to layer up the butterflies so you can see the wings. I added, you know, some of the ephemera in there. Then I'll add magnets. And this is one of the um, crystal lacquer pieces from the ephemera kit that I had. So is this. And I said I did put all of those pieces into this album, which I liked. And what I like, too, is the blue fern cardboard where we... Um, matched all the colors to the window uh, that's just a die but uh, to the uh, the bench the park bench and using the hinges and getting all those crackles here I'm just going through and showing you where I planted some of these fused acrylic pages and uh, yeah it's different that's what it is it's just different I left a page right there to have a bit bigger picture, but it has the lines that you can actually put memories on there. So that's nice too. Whatever you choose to do with this is um, makes it your own, right? This will just uh, pull all of your memories together and that's always fun. So here I just got out some metal pieces I had. I forgot. I found these actually <laughs> slid under a bookcase in my craft room. I don't know. It must have been a few pieces of this and that that I hadn't used for a long time and I thought hmm let's see. They have those drawer pull out drawer pieces you know that are in the uh, vintage metals. You can see them right by my wrist there. I used those as to make it look like there was drawers that would pull out. So that was nice to find that. Look at that door piece, that hinge, so nice in that, in that ravens. And then I was going to put a zipper closure on um, this album as well. I did think of that, but I thought I'll do that another time because I had so much going for that, you know, so far that I didn't want to delve into putting material on there like and uh, sewing the zippers so that the front would close but that's going to be my next project. I think it would look really cool to have a zippered front and then you open it up. So I'm trying to find a spot for my little key and uh, a lot of tuck spot spots in here you'll find when you go over and view Claire's uh, work and I'm going to link all of them. I'll link two 6x6 six six albums I really enjoyed. I'll link the one that this was, I was inspired by totally. Then I found another one that uh, was a good beginner album to make. So here's the uh, crystal lacquer, 3D crystal lacquer. And I want to shine all those birds up sitting there. And I did the wheels of the bike. 
and it just makes the paper sturdy. That's what this does. It holds it together for when you're sliding things in and out. And I, I just love the look, that wet, uh, plasticky look that you get when you put the glossy accents on. So there's the front. We've got the shaker. We have the silver corners. We have the wonderful brackets, you know, hinges. And now I have to make room to put my, um, oh, what do you call these things? My lockets, my buckles, my belt buckles. And I want them to be directly in the center. So I just slid my uh, cutting knife in underneath the uh, waterfall, like the waterfall, underneath my um, beads, the park bench there, and I got it right on uh, E6000 for sure because you're working with metal, and that's a shaker card. How can I, a shaker unit, a shaker bench, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. So I let that sit for a while. I think I put a pinchy tool on there. There it comes. And let that rest while I was doing something else. So it would stay in the middle. And then the other one is just to slide your ribbon around it. And uh, what you do is you loop it and you glue it. To, or you loop it and then you put two of them together with a brat, with an eyelet. And then you squeeze some glue in there so it doesn't come apart. You kind of fold it over. You'll see how I do that in a minute. And it really looks good. And it gives you a lot of room to add pictures and add memorabilia in here. And you have enough ribbon. Uh, and it's cotton. Uh, uh, oh, what's it? Uh, I want to say fluorigated. That's not the word. It's uh, corrugated. Yes, corrugated. So you have a lot of strength with that. And uh, yeah, I'm just trying to get rid of the uh, racer marks I made to get the center on here. And this was really fun because it incorporated the browns that were in the uh, paper. You know, we accentuated the pink, a little bit of pink, the violet, and um, but you know, there was a lot of brown tones in there, and I wanted to have a ribbon that had brown sayings. It had friend, and uh, hmm, it's right here, friend and family. That's what it had there. And I did incorporate a bit of the ribbon, uh, the cotton ribbon in the front of this later on. So that's why I wanted to keep that, and we'll show you, walk you through it again. And now we're going to fuse, 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 get a lot of these. You know, I like being able to stick two or three smaller uh, cards in the center. And that's what you could do. I actually made two books. It had a little spine. And I slid some acetate pictures that I liked inside it. And then you can put your ephemera in there like this or like or cut out paper that you like and put it inside here and then tuck it wherever you want to in a tuck spot to hold down pictures now here we go you're going to run this through the buckle first and see how much you need right and then expand it also i'm just picking out some light oh cream it was like a creamy brown eyelids I took out for this and when you punch a hole in it because it is corrugated and it is cotton just be patient with it and punch it a couple of times and then work it through with your pokey tool because you will have fibers coming out spill your little eyelets and these are small eyelets they're not huge they're for the smaller hole on the crocodile and look at that I couldn't believe that it was actually bending and looking look how beautiful that looks it was just perfect every time I was so happy so I thought that's enough there because I'm going to bend it over so it has a nice end on it you know uh, so that it looks like it's um, finished like a finished look 
and uh, we're going to get these and they're going to travel all the way up this ribbon. And what I, this pulled everything together for me. I really did have fun. You want to cut it out with your scissors just to get that eyelet piece in there and then just get your crocodile and one time, look at that, they look like stars and then bang them, bang them until, you don't want to bang them until you knock all the paint off. You just want to bang them so they're seated down a bit if they didn't all, you know, make that star. If one is sticking up a little bit, just take your little miniature uh, hammer and hammer them. There we go. So let's put it through the eye and bring it down. And then you're just going to fold it into the bottom piece. And you have yourself a beautiful bucket. Bucket. <laughs> a belt bu buckle. Yes, belt buckle. It's 10 o'clock. I'm okay. I don't get crazy till midnight. So bear with me. So here we go. I'm just trying to see if this tucks and does what I want it to do. And let's see, isn't that lovely? I'm just taking off some of the trimming and this really was fun. And I think the more albums I make, the quicker the process will be. And then the tutorials won't be so long. My, my edit voiceovers won't be so long. And I actually want to learn how to do live videos so that we can chat back and forth. I think that would be a lot of fun. I'm thinking I'm at a place where I could learn that and uh, you know I have an iPad a big one and I have a laptop and then I have this big desktop here my husband bought me and I think with all of those things I could somehow work out where I can um, be able to do a live for you on YouTube and that way you get to know each other too because you can yak right you can talk to one another I can read your comments and answer them and it just makes it a little more personal, and that's what I like. I like to be a little more personable when we're creating. And over the six years, I have been... See how I put the fold in this, and then I put a brad, and then I punched it through so that it had that nice loop at the end. I knew it wasn't going to fray. That's one thing to remember. It looks really uh, professional. I really like that look. And uh, let's put it through there, and... Buckle it up. I still have quite a bit. Look at that. I have quite a bit to work with to expand that, to put more pictures, more acetate folders, and more goodness in there. And, and then I'll learn how to incorporate more of the paper instead of using my um, uh, what is it? you know my material stash and my uh, beautiful bridal cut off lace and all of that stuff that is so yummy and I love to use. Uh, you won't be seeing so much of that. I'll be incorporating more paper and showing you how to work the paper. Hopefully I get to that stage for you while I'm designing for my creative spirit. And I'm going to set out that I watch quite a few of Claire's tutorials so I can see how her thinker works. Oh, I'm growing a flower right there. Yes, taking my mind off this. Yeah, and just seeing how Claire's mind works when she uh, makes her albums so that I can mold my mind and get it to uh, easily know how to put these pages in and how to uh, set them up. It takes time to learn, but I'm willing to do that. And... Uh, I love to learn, you know. Um, learning is the key. It makes things, you love it more when you know it. You know, we always love what we know. And so here we go. We've got that mastered, and then we're going to move on to something else. We're almost finished. Can you believe it? I only have a little bit left to share with you, and then I'll put it out there and see how many people... Can, oh, I put some hot glue here to hold this down. That's what I did. I wanted to secure this fold so that uh, no phrase would come out. And it matched. 
Oh, did it ever match the wood grain papers on the inside? And I love the idea that it had friend and family written on it. Friends and family. You know, one was in font and one was in typing form. So that was nice. Kind of took me time here, didn't I? I think I've done this six times. You should know this off by heart. And then, you know, when you find the buckle, you need to find the ribbon the right size, too. And cotton variegated ribbon is perfect. It's thick, and you have to move. I'm saying that you have to move it, uh, your booklet, so that if it looks crooked, it's not because you placed it crooked, because you didn't. You measured. It's just sometimes you get your album gets... Uh, you know, you bend it and it looks like it's crooked. Just don't worry about it. If you have if if you have that buckle on three inches on each side, it's going to be perfect when the ribbon comes through. Okay? So let's do a last look here. A looky looky to see what we have. There you go. Um all spots for journaling, for paper, for memorabilia. Of course, for pictures and uh, little tuck spots. I put one of these right out of the Zyron so that you could, uh, if you wanted to add a little sticky note down there. And here's a little booklet. You know, you can put anything you want in the wings of that butterfly. All magnetized. This does stick to those two beautiful um, butterflies there. And then you have a large tuck spot. You have enough to put three small ephemera pieces if you tuck them over. I think I had, there was a bit of glue in there. So once I got that situated and, uh, you know, we'll wait and find a spot for that. It's so pretty to me. And I liked adding the pearls in between. You could have put the matching paper, yes. It would have been nice too, but... And now on this card, I'm going to add the matching ribbon around the, I'm going to just do an L shape on this um, piece, that, you know, this card, uh, with the same ribbon, just to pull it together. Isn't that sweet? And that way the belt buckle uh, ribbon isn't standing alone. And this is a card you can use for pictures on the back and uh, prettiness on the front. So there you go. There's that key we put on top of our acetate. And uh, yeah, that's magnetized. It's there. I just have to find where the magnet was on the front or the back. And here we go. We're just adding a whole lot of uh, tucks and pages and um, everything that was on the pages of the 12 by 12 uh, collection. That's what I did. And here's another one that I made up. This is very pretty as well, where I used some of the lacquer pieces on the ephemera that was given to us in that little bag. And I'm making a tuck spot to fuse on my acetate to put that in. And I thought the more the better. The more little cases I could make to put my little booklets would keep not only the booklets clean and free from dust, but you could put so much more in there. You know, you didn't have to solely depend on the just the booklet alone. And here's where I decided to make a book. See how you see the spine, the tiny little spine on each side. And I love the fact that it looked like a book, you know. And then I grabbed one of my stamps that I stamped out on the acetate. I put one on each side of this book. And fabulous. This was working out really well. I did two of them. Two of the fused acetate books. Put a spine down the middle. And then you can actually use a piece of like boing boing thread in gold or silver and put it around you know, instead of a belly band, you could use that going around this book to hold it together. So many possibilities, so many possibilities. You could make a paper belly band and uh, you could put a brad on each side. You could put, um, um, you know, and wrap um, ribbon to tie it 
together. You can put eyelets. It's endless and it will still look pretty, you know. So here I made this little pocket flip and I'm putting it inside. This has a belly band. I made a belly band inside there and you'll see it in the pictures. Isn't that pretty? Oh, I love these. And even the black one, you know, I put a stretchy boing boing thread on that. And now we're going to cut these out to fit into our actual books with the spine on them. So, and then just slide it in. You don't have to stamp it on the outside of your um, acetate book. You just uh, fuse them together or slide them in, either or. I just slid them down in and then you can put some vellum and then put, um, you know, your pictures in there facing the vellum so it just matches your album. So many possibilities. I did one with the violet hat and I did one lady with the black hat. So, um, yeah, it all matched. Can you hear that rain? Oh, it is coming down. Is it ever? So now, let's see. Oh, it had these clocks in the paper pack. So I am just taking out my, it just fit on this, I think it was one inch. One inch or three quarter inch. I'm taking it off. I'm going to cover one of them with the uh, crystal lacquer and one I'm not. And I'm going to make a belly band with these. One on each side. And uh, look at that collection we have going there. Tons and tons of actual area space for pictures and journaling. You're going to have a ton with this album. You know, if you're interested in it, just let me know. And uh, I really like this one. So um, there you have it. It's coming together. There's my little clocks. I found those so cute. And then I cut two pieces of... Um, cardstock, you know, for the backs of them so it was so it just gave it some stability. So I put a piece of cardstock on the back of the clock and then we'll put the band on there and it just went together perfectly. I loved it. And this is the time that you spend learning your collection, how to work your collection. You know, from doing the last three of the stamp year collections I sure did learn more with every project than I did before I started, right? So, and um, I always say, you, you have to go into creating uh, with uh, the thought process that you can, you can do it. You can create. You can go on and I mean, there's nothing wrong with going and checking out what uh, Claire did on her channel and uh, getting some inspiration from that and following it through with your project. That's what we do, right? That's what crafters do. We go. That's why we go on different, we all have different channels and we all have different uh, um, ways of creating things, you know? It'd be a terrible thing if we all did the same thing, wouldn't it? Um, I just enjoy so much seeing all the talent. You don't have to have uh, 500,000 subscribers to think that you're good at uh, doing a craft. You really don't. The subscribers will come in time. You just concentrate on your work and uh, you'll be blessed with subscribers, trust me. I never thought I'd see the day that I had 20,000 subscribers. That's what I'm going on. I can't wait to have that party. I have so many gifts I've bought for that. It's, it's crazy. I just can't wait to hit it so that I can give away some beautiful uh, art products. I did a video on all the giveaways there. I can leave a link on that. But um, I don't like to get subscribers just because I'm giving stuff away, so I don't like to promote that uh, all the time. But I do... Uh, at Christmas, I did get some really good buys on some um, art pencils and uh, pens and inks and all kinds of goodness. You should see the bag. It's just full. 
So, and I've made some specialty cards and some, you know, just some goodies. I don't want to give it all away because I am going to have a lot. I'm going to pick a lot of winners for my 20,000 subby. And can you imagine 20? I didn't think I would have 200. Oh, and I say that. I did not think. When I got 200 subscribers, oh, I couldn't sleep at night. <laughs> I thought, wow. 200 people in my craft room. You can't fit 200 people in my craft room. Well, you could squish them together. But, uh, yeah, there's that belly band I made with the clock. And I'm just going to let it dry there with a clip. A couple of clips, I think. Yeah, there we go. Isn't that pretty? So pretty. And then you, I moved it so you could see that romantic time. And then I decided to put the clock over it. <laughs> yeah, it's just what we do, right? What time do I want it to be? That's what I'm trying to figure out there. And uh, this was a, a nice album to make. I know I'm saying it over and over, but uh, it's a learning curve, and I had to learn it. Now, here's the fun. Here's where my flowers come out, my paper flowers, my jewelry. I made some beautiful glass leaves. I made some beautiful um, beaded leaves, some, um, you, I really zoomed it in so you could see all of the beads that I did use and implement. Um, I had spacers in between them all that matched the back. I really took pride in everything I made for the back of this album with my, um, with my jewelry collection. So, and my flowers. I love paper flowers. So right here, I'm just trying to get a grasp of how much I need as far as the flower thing is going. And I love to take the wire and loop it around. I have a little narrow file, a little round file, and I wrap it around there. I like that look instead of chomping it off. I like to have that curly Q thing happening. Then I took out these gorgeous diamond uh, raindrops. They're beautiful. And I had some in the lilac as well. Then I took them all off because I didn't have my spacers in there. I wanted to put some uh, diamond round spacers in between them. And you can see that I have the um, lilac uh, raindrop glass beads as leaves there with the purple flower. And this was all coming together for me. I just uh, I just had fun with my beads. I don't get to do very much bead work. Um, I haven't, and I, you know, I love my beads. And uh, right, Deb, we did a lot of bead work at one time. And how you doing, Janet? I know you're gonna like this. And. Uh, my friend, that Tina that makes albums, she makes beautiful albums. Um, I'm sure she's going to really enjoy this one. Not because I made it, but there are a lot of different ideas in here. And I always get inspired by Tina's cards and albums. So, um, yeah, there we go. I couldn't believe today I, I spent, you know, when I wasn't doing this, voiceover I am doing housework and things don't you love it just take a quick look at it just stare at it for a minute it's just beautiful glass beads aren't they it just brings that rose to life I love it so here I made like a treble clef with beads because I knew I was going to put a rose in between there and I'm using E6000 and it doesn't stick right away it is because I had the metal on it. So I'm going to grab a clip and clip it. I put some hot glue on the flower just to hold that up. I didn't want it sliding down all the time. You can tell my voice is going on me, can't you? Please, please let me get to the end. And uh, <clears throat> sorry, I think I might have to go get some lemon tea. So here we go. I just planning it. And you don't want to overwork your flowers and your, um, you know, what you're putting beside this shaker window. 
but uh, you do want it to complement the back of the page, right? You want it flat enough because it is going to lay on the back side most of the time. There's a nice circle of these beautiful violet, green, and off-white glitter diamonds. Oh, I love them. And uh, just put them on some um, wire, and there you have it. I had this kind of uh, crown thing that I think a candle went inside of it, and that's what that was in. I took it out of that, and here I'm going to run. I made this uh, raindrop pearl thingy going across the bottom of the window. Isn't that pretty? And I'm just going to run that there with the E6000, and then I'm going to make a loop from that. And it all works out. Like you're looking at it and you're thinking, oh no, what did I do here? But it does work out. And I need to put that flower there because the hot glue will keep that glass uh, jewelry making stable. So I have a violet flower there, a white flower on the other side. And that will hold this together at the bottom of my shaker window. Isn't that sweet? And then I went to my jewelry and I found the, obviously the brooch, the cameo brooch. Uh, I just took the pin off the back. And then I found this bracelet that I absolutely have been hoarding in my jewelry box. I only wore it twice. And I thought, no, it has to go here because the colors are identical. And then I wanted to have some hanging pearls with little tiny beads. So I snuck a few up there. That always looks sweet, you know, colored pearls. They're beautiful. And um, yeah, I just set a whole lot of little items in a jar that I thought would look good. And I made this one. I love the boggles on this with that beautiful milk crystal in there. They're beautiful. When you see them, they have these roses. It had red and violet roses inside the milk glass. Just beautiful. So I made a strand of that and I'll weave it into there. And it really does bring a small 6x6 six six album uh, to a peak, you know, of uh, prettiness. It just adds prettiness. So I gotta find where I wanna put that and I end up doing that in time. You have to stand back. You have to look at it and stand back. And then once you get it, you get it. You don't have to, you know, do it 10,000 times. You'll get it. It'll, you'll look at it and go, oh, there it is. That's what I'm doing. Or, no, it has to go higher. Oh, maybe right there. Let's see. But once the glue goes on it, the hot glue, that's where she's staying, right there. Now you have to figure out, do I want it to bend or be straight? You know, these little things. Isn't that that milk glass beautiful? It's glass. It has the milk glass inside the glass. And then it has that blown flowers in there. Just gorgeous. When you see this in real life, it's incredible. Just incredible. These beads I chose out of my collections are gorgeous. So we're going to run one of these violet ones down to match and just have it as a dangle and lift it up there. And I, I did love this part too. I wondered whether I should have left that clean with just the window, but the more I looked at it with the cameo on the spine, I thought I had to add a lot of color. I wanted to boom it up with, with colored beads. Now here comes the necklace. Look at this necklace. I love this necklace. Oh yes, the, it's the perfect violet color in these glass beads. Perfect. And I love the way they hung, like each one of them hung off of the main beads. I'll show you right here. Look at this. This is what it looks like on your neck. It's to go like this. It has a V like that and then it goes up into a necklace. Isn't that gorgeous? And now I'm going to implement that, the hanging bead, onto this. And even though it takes some time, don't worry about it. You know, if you're like me, 55 hours, you've got time. Just 
play around, it'll come to you. And all of a sudden, oh, I wanted to add green because in these field flowers, there's green. So I had to captivate that. Plus I had the green wires to the flowers. So I wanted to just uh, make sure that I incorporated this in there because the beads are beautiful. They're just beautiful beads. And uh, yeah, isn't that pretty? Really, it's just Victorian. It just reminds me of a cluster of Victorian goodness. It doesn't have to make sense. It just has to be pretty. I mean, you know, it's going to L around there. Then I'm going to lift this up and have that bead go back and forth. I didn't want to uh, glue it down so it was solid. I wanted it to wiggle back and forth so that in the sunlight you could see the glass uh, just sparkle, just glitter. Everything in here was beauteous to me. And uh, yeah, we'll get to that corner. I'll turn it down. Yeah, I'll work that. There it is on the top. See how I just wound it around the corner and uh, incorporated it there. I love the silver because behind those little silver uh, beads, there's little crystals of violet, little tiny things in there. You have to see it in person. I hope the pictures will show it. And this is the necklace right here. Uh, and you can see how it turns that mustard color? Then it goes to violet, to pink, to opal. This necklace was beautiful, just beautiful. I did, I got that at an antique store. So, um, you know, if somebody favors this, you're going to know that there's some pretty nice uh, jewelry on this that uh, just really captivated me when I put it on. It seemed like that necklace was made to go in there. And I took my time. I took my time. I wasn't in a rush. I did want it to look presentable. I didn't want to make it look like I put it in a pile of my hands and threw it at the window. And then <laughs> wherever it landed, that's where I glued it on. It had to have a purpose for me. You all know that. Um, I like to work patiently so I can figure it all out. And if I can't, I go grab a, a soda or I grab a tea, a nice Tetley tea or an Ovaltine, and I'll sit and have that and stare at it. Just have my tea and stare at it. And then all of a sudden, oh yes, that has to go right there. Just that little thing has to go right there. You did it, Carol. It's a wow factor. And if anything in my craft room makes that a wow factor, I'm ripping it off whatever it's on and putting it on there because that's what makes it work. This is the final few minutes that we have here to just take a look and see how this comes together. Thank you for joining me. Thank you very much for all your beautiful comments in thanking me for being um, chosen to be a design team member for 2020 for My Creative Spirit with Claire. I think you pronounce your name Claire Cheville. Cheville. And we all know you as Claire. And uh, I'll never forget that day. And um, yes. Isn't it funny how you you send in a design team to be a design team member, you know, to have people look at your work, and then you set it aside. You don't even worry about it or think about it. You just give it over to the Lord and wait and see what happens. So here we are. I actually slowed it down. I wanted you to see it in slow motion. So let's give us some room. There's the back. Very eclectic. Very shabby. There's the beautiful pin that I have had. <laughs> and you see the family and friends with the uh, cotton flowers in the bottom. You have a waterfall card flip. This is the library card I made. Another, um, you know, pull tab and some of my fuse acetate pieces, this little envelope, turn it over, here's the booklet, 
that does not fall off. It has a butterfly, two butterfly tuck spots in there. Then you're going to put it into your acetated fuse tool pocket and it's going to stay there. Here's some more little tuck cards to write on and whatever else. There's a book, one of the books I made and there's a big spot for journaling and look at those beautiful brass um, drawer uh, pieces for pulling out your drawer. Isn't that nice? I incorporated that in there and some more of the Fuse Tool Sentiments. And here, oh, I like that one. Oh, Carol, that is beautiful. Oh, she's pretty. <laughs> Better get out of here. And uh, yeah, all of these, that magnets with the key. It has some nice weight right there where the uh, hearts are. And that's the album, my friends. I hope you liked it. I hope you were inspired. I hope you enjoyed our time spent together as we're looking through the album. Look at all the tuck spots, all the wraps, all of the ideas to use with your fuse tool, the acetate. And here's another one of the cards I created. Just put some things in. You have your clip tab, your swing tab in there. And there's the one, the ribbons that matched the closure and a belly band, of course. And then you're going to put it in your fuse pocket. And I had so much fun making these pockets. You can seat it anywhere, my friends, and it will hold because of having the thickness. And there we closed it up. Thank you very much. I want to dedicate this to my creative spirit, Declare. And um, I had some more little tuck things that I had made that I will uh, add to this uh, album. So you have yourself, like I say, a blessed week. Take care of yourselves. Uh, try not to fear. And enjoy each crafting friend that we have. And support them as well. So take care and off we go to see the pictures. Mm -hmm.